Okay, um, this is the walkthrough of lab eight, the random forest lab. Um, I've split it into two pieces so it doesn't get too long. Um, so as before, you can copy and paste it in. I've already done that um, into a blank R Markdown document. Um, the data set we're going to be using is a data set of housing prices. Some of you have been working with housing prices before. Um, this particular data set is from Ames, Iowa from 2006 to 2010. Um, it's actually kind of a fairly well-known uh, public data set that people use for purposes like this. Um, what's kind of cool about it is one of Truman's faculty members, uh, Dr. Dean DeCook, whose office is just down the hall from mine, prepared this data set. Um, it has a bunch of uh, cool uh, categorical and numerical variables, so it's a really good data set to use for uh, different kind of models. So um, first we're going to go ahead and install all the packages we need. Um, notice that the install packages is there if you haven't uh, installed those on your computer yet, just take out the hashtag. Um, then that Ames housing package, it contains the data set we're talking about and make ordinal Ames is the command that's built into it. Um, you can see I made raw Ames, uh, the data from there. It has about uh, 2,900 observations. So each row is a house sale. Um, and then each of the 81 variables is one of the measures that we used. Um, so here, let's first check it out. Um, you can use head and dim, which is a good way to do it inside of an R Markdown document. Um, you can see here it has all of the uh, variables, just the top of them. You can see the kind of variables it has. Um, because we uploaded the ordinal version of the data set, um, it does have um, these factors put into order um, from least, so it's an ordinal factor variable um, so that we can do uh, math with that. You can see over here, ordinal factor. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, you can click on it or you can use view, but in R Markdown, that's actually not so good to do. Um, and then the size is right here as well. And again, we can see that from here, 2930 observations, 81 variables. All right, so uh, let me start just by making a quick uh, histogram here. So this histogram is the sale price. Um, because it is the raw data, notice it's in the funny uh, notation, but 2E plus 05 is $200,000, $400,000. And as you might imagine, it's uh, somewhat normally shaped, although it's skewed a bit because of the few fancy houses. Um, Ames, Iowa has a housing market not that different from Kirksville. It's about three times the size of Kirksville. Um, so you can get a, you know, lots of houses for under $200,000. Okay, so one thing we tend to do when we have data sets like this is that we take a log of them. And what the log does, you remember the log function from your earlier algebra classes. Um, and what it does is, right, it calculates uh, the formula for that. And so um, the uh, function is uh, pretty okay, um, but these are natural logarithms. And so what we've done is we're replacing price with log price. So um, here we go, when I make a histogram of that, you can see that it's actually now almost perfectly normally distributed. If you were actually going to share your results with uh, outside people, you want to be sure to unlog it at the end so that you could, um, you know, make sense of it since log prices is sort of a weird um, thing, right? 2e to the 12th is right about $200,000. Um, so e to the 12th, I should say. Um, okay, so um, I want to mention a couple categorical variables. One reason this is a really cool data set is that um, in addition to the regular data that we have um, that's available on public databases like the county or through real estate offices, the realtors themselves uh, included some ratings of the house and two of them are the overall quality and the overall condition. So the quality of the house was the quality of the house when things were new or is made of nice things. And then condition is whether or not it's well maintained. So you could imagine an older house that's uh, well maintained would be high on both of those. An older house that's maybe a bit run down would have a high quality but low condition. And maybe a house that was more cheaply uh, created would still have a good condition but maybe doesn't have the high quality. And if we make the table here, you can see um, here's a two way table of that. Um, and you do see that down here. Um, not very many houses are, you know, excellent at both. And in fact, many of them are average uh, condition, but high quality. So that means that they were very nice when they were new. Um, all right. Um, another cool thing in this data set are measures of latitude and longitude. Um, we're not doing GPS here or mapping. 
Um, but if you go ahead and make just a plot of this, you can see here is what um, the um, latitude and longitude looks like. And again, we're not going to do a GPS thing here, but if I pull up Google Maps and I just pull up Ames, Iowa, oop, you can actually uh, sort of see here. There you go, put that away. Um, that the shape looks the same, and the hole in the middle is this park as well as Iowa State University. And of course, there aren't any rental houses there. Um, the log price, um, again, kind of shows how, um, which prices or houses are worth more. You can see the lighter colored blue um, are the more expensive houses. They tend to be on the north end of town. Um, and actually, if you look at the map, you'll can see up here is a country club and a pretty lake. Um, and then down here near campus are a lot of the less fancy houses. I don't know if you've heard, but sometimes college students live in less fancy houses in order to save money. All right, so anyway, we're not going to do any more with that here, but um, being able to graph the latitude and longitude is a nice, easy uh, beginning of that sort of graphical representation. Um, and again, the question asks you to talk about that a little bit. Um, then, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take out ones that have empty rows. So um, Ames omit is going to be the data set that's missing things. You can actually do that in different ways, and I'm going to do it here just because it's a little bit easier um, to calculate. We only left one house off. Um, otherwise, you worry about um, making matrices of different sizes, and then when you do predictions, they won't uh, work. Okay, next up, we're going to split our data set in two. We talked about this before. Um, using sample frac, so 65% of the data is going to go in the training set, 35% is going to go in the testing data set, and boom, there we go, and you can now see train and test are there. So um, we're going to make a tree just like we did before, um, and there you go, and what you can see is quality is our number one uh, splitter. High quality homes tend to be worth more. Um, Garage is a secondary thing, having a big garage is a sign, and then a secondary split on quality. You can see some of the other variables, um, basement, um, size, general living area, um, and then some of the other categories. So this is sort of a useful chart, um, but as we talked about, um, forests make a whole bunch of trees using those random processes, both the bootstrapping aggregation and the variable selection. And by using both of those together, we get much more powerful um, models. And so here we are, we're going to just do the command uh, to run this. Um, we put a comment line here so it wouldn't take forever to run um, because random forests do take a lot longer. You figure their default is they're going to make 500 trees. So however many trees it's going to make, it's going to take 500 times as long uh, to do that. So here we are, we're going to run it. And then um, as that's running, I also just have it display the output that's going to be showing. Yep, it takes this long to run. You can see that the syntax of the command is the same as we did for regressions or cart. What we're predicting, tilde dot to include all the other variables, and then the training data is the data that we're using. This is actually a little bit longer than I think it should take. Now, um, we're still waiting for the output to come out, but one thing that's sort of uh, unnerving about doing random forest, there it is, um, is it rather than giving you an output that looks like a nice pretty tree, is it just tells you it made 500 trees. It tried 26 variables at each split, so that's what a third of the 81 variables will 
um, not that many. And then it gives you an R squared value, which is the percent of variance explained, and then the mean of squared residuals. If we wanted to compare this to a root mean squared error, we just take the square root of it. Um, but it's actually way better um, than what we had before. So um, now that we have the random forest made, this AMS.RF, we can measure it in a couple different ways. So um, the first way we're going to examine it is um, what Dr. Thatcher calls the wrong way, which I think is a good way to put it. Um, the metrics package actually has the RMSE command built in, which is why we uh, included that. And when we run that analysis, um, all it does is it just makes a value based off of it, and then it calculates your root mean squared error. And so what this tells us is that it's off by about 0.05. This is log dollars, so it's a little bit confusing to think about. Um, but we could convert it back to real numbers anyway. Anyway, using a data set to predict itself is not very impressive. It's like flipping a coin and then seeing what it is and trying to predict how you just flipped a coin, right? You're going to be very good at that. Um, the two other predictions that we're going to use that are better are the out-of-bag error, um, which again um, is computed in there as well. And um, so our root mean squared error was 0.017 and then our out-of-bag error is 0.13. Notice that's higher than our internal error because again, a model should be able to predict itself um, pretty well. So um, there you go, that worked pretty well. The other way to do it is to use a test set. So a test set is the idea that since we split the data in uh, two parts, we use the training data to make a model and then we compare it against the test set to see how well it works. And here you can see we're using the same predict command, but now we're putting in aims.test um, to do that. And we're doing it with both the cart and the random forest that we did um, last time and this time. And we're calculating the RMSE. For cart, our random uh, root mean squared error was 21. Again, that's sort of a weird number because it's root mean squared error of log dollars. But what it's easy to see is that the random forest was way better. Um, and also sort of interesting is that our test set gave a similar answer to our out of bag error, which is good. Um, because sometimes we can't do a test in a training set. So out of, bound error, out of bag error actually works uh, pretty well with that. Okay, so this is part one of the lab. We'll come back to part two here in a minute.